Welcome to Latino Talk TV. I'm your host, Ben Mendez, and today we're going to talk to Nori Angel with Sir Jobs for Progress, and we're going to talk about the great things they're doing. But first, we're going to talk about some current events. Now, I know you're not a football fan, but Dallas Cowboys beat the Houston Texans, Texans this weekend, unfortunately. Even though they're both Texas teams, I'm a big Dallas, I'm a big Houston Texans fan. And I know a lot of people here in Houston as well that are Texans fans. And unfortunately, we lost over time. Uh, so what do you think about that? That's unfortunate. Unfortunate, huh? I'm sure people are very sad about it. It was a sad day on Sunday. <laughs> but let's talk about a more serious note with the NFL. Uh, you've heard about all the violence, uh, especially against women, mm -hmm. um, on behalf of the NFL players. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? That's a big question. I think that it's probably bringing attention to how women are viewed and, and seen and treated, and it's a good thing. It's a good thing that there's more attention to this issue. You know, with all the media that's on the NFL, we had two more incidents. We had two people that are NFL players that were arrested this weekend for misbehaving, okay? Uh, one was arrested at a club, and another one was arrest arrested at a restaurant. Now, you probably know this, the NFL is being scrutinized right now. And any kind of issues that they have is going to be spotlighted. Now, the mere fact that these two individuals were arrested, their mug shots are all over the media now, uh, that's going to create some problems for them. Uh, they might be looking at perhaps being taken out of the play, being taken out of the league for a couple of months, uh, being put on probation, et cetera, et cetera. It's bad timing. Now, any other sport, they probably wouldn't look so hard, but this is the NFL. And so they have a huge microscope right here over them. And so what do you say to that? Hmm. Well, what were they arrested for? Let me ask that question. One was arrested for resisting arrest. <laughs> he was told to leave a, a club at 2 a.m., and he refused to leave. So the cops were called. Cops told him to leave, and he refused to leave again, so they arrested him, okay? Uh, the other person, actually, pretty much the same thing, uh, was being told to leave a restaurant, and he got out of hand, mm. and they arrested him as well. So one was from Minnesota, and the other one was from Miami, and of course, two separate teams, and they're both professional players, and they should know better than this, and unfortunately, they were arrested this week. And so we'll see what happens. Let's talk about something more serious, the Ebola virus. Now we had a, this gentleman from Dallas that came from, uh, he came from Africa and obviously he carried the virus. And now everybody around him uh, was being quarantined. And then we had another nurse actually that left Africa as well and went to Spain and she has Ebola. So this is not just a local problem. I mean, this is an international problem. So obviously, everybody's scared, uh, especially if they're, they're, they're boarding a plane from outside the United States, because you never know what's going to happen, right? Exactly. It's very contagious, and, mm -hmm. and this thing can spread like wildfire if we don't take precautions, if we don't quarantine people. Now, I will tell you that me, myself, I travel a lot, and I'm a little bit worried about getting on a plane now. Well, can you imagine what the person feels like who has traveled and comes home and has this virus now? Yeah, uh, that's absolutely. And how you would feel if you were being quarantined and now your family members are being quarantined. And Well, you know, it's something that has to happen major, though. Yeah. You know, you can't just have someone with Ebola just walking the streets and going to different places and spreading. It might, it might spread even though you're, it's only spread by bodily fluids, the gentleman can sneeze. It could be something uh, out of the ordinary that causes some kind of fluids to go to someone else's bodies. And as a result, they might get the virus. Yeah. Well, it's, gonna ha it's happening. The question is to what extent it's going to keep happening. Yeah. And people are human and they are traveling and they want to get on, you know, I, I read the story about this guy who in Dallas and he went home for family matters and you can just imagine, I mean, he took a big risk by coming back 
And, but I'm sure he probably felt very trapped in his own country coming back from Liberia or wherever he was. So I don't know. I think he's going to face some consequences because of that decision. Yeah. And then we had a young child. He was left in the car in the middle of the heat in Phoenix, Arizona. His mother went to church to go sing with the choir, and the infant passed away. Well, thank you for joining us, Mr. I Javier Perez. Time and spirit, dude. <laughs> yeah. Scotty beat me down. This, this is live television, okay? <laughs> so you never know what to expect. So that means I can just. Javier was stuck in traffic. <laughs> I, I mean, he, he, he works very far away, too. Yeah, that's four, why I got here this so, so quickly. All three or four minutes away, and yet he, he was. <laughs> Sliding in at the last minute, but thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, guys. So, so we had this young man that passed away, an infant basically that passed away because his mother left him in the car in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. Now you know better than I do. Phoenix is hot. Okay. Oh yeah. In midday, they left him in the car for three hours while the mother went to go practice with the choir at church. So okay. she intentionally did this. Well. Or she forget uh, about she the child. Forgot. She probably forgot. Let, let's give her the benefit of the doubt, yeah. okay? Now, I will tell you, the heat in Arizona is unbearable. Oh. They always talk about humidity here. Well, yeah. it gets really hot in Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. And the mere fact that the child was left in the vehicle for three hours, I mean, come on. Who in their right mind would leave their child for three hours? You know, and, and you hope it's a matter of just, you know, with with the way everyone's schedule is these days, you know, parents having to do so much, you hope it's just a matter of they just actually forgot, made a, made a mistake, you know. But I, I hope that nobody would intentionally, especially in Arizona, would intentionally leave their child in the car because they had other things to take care of. That, that, that would just be, that's just horrendous. That would be unforgivable. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about my last item here in the agenda. Michael Phelps, our Olympic swimmer. Okay, okay. is he smoking grass again? No, now well, it's a DWI, not, isn't it? It was a DUI. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, actually, he was suspended from the swim team, the U.S. swim team, for yeah. six months. Supposedly, he's going to go get some help, whatever that means. Uh, I don't know if he's going to go somewhere to talk about his uh, drinking or his smoking dope or I don't know I have no idea well it sounds like it's a good thing we have Nora here because maybe Nora can help him out we'll <laughs> yeah. put him in the surf program <laughs> well uh, it's unfortunate I mean this guy how many gold medals did he win I what, forget eight? Eight. Was eight? It eight? I think eight so. gold medals gold medalists now he was speeding and he was drunk got pulled over and obviously this led to the suspension okay so he sus he suspended for six months from the swim team. Now, of course, there's a lot of things involved in that because it's not just the swim team. Just think about the endorsements, yeah. uh, all the money that. He, yeah, tell the Minnesota he, Vikings about that. Yeah. Yeah, tell the NFL about yeah, that. Absolutely. Exactly. exactly. There's yeah. a lot of money at stake. I mean, if you're Nike or whoever his endorser is, uh, and you're looking at the TV and he's getting all this bad press, obviously that's going to have an impact, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. You know, from what I understand, he put his his swimming. Uh, the, his, his swimming career on hold. Well, he was trying I, to go after another Olympics. Well, whatever happened there, he's not on the swim team anymore. Wow. Okay, so for six months anyway. Oh so man, we'll I'm glad we that. We have to put you in rehab too. You know what? Let me let me knock on wood. That's never <laughs> happened to me, and Lord hope it never does. But that that is that is such a such a big mistake for for a young man to make. Now we're gonna have to put you in rehab for always coming late. <laughs> Coming late hey, to ben, work. I had, I was, I'm sorry, I had something I had to take care of at TBH. I just couldn't get away. Okay. But, you know, so, thank goodness I'm only four minutes away. So, <laughs> so we're going to take a little break now. And when we come back, we're going to talk to Nori Angel and Sir Jobs for Progress. So join us in two minutes. Oh, man, I was running. Right before I left.
back to Latino Talk TV. I'm your host, Ben Mendez, joined by Mr. Javier Perez and our lovely guest, Ms. Nori Angel from Sir Jobs for Progress. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So now we're going to talk a little bit about Sir Jobs and the history. There's a lot of history there. There is. So let's talk about when you were founded and why was it founded? Well, SARE was founded in 1964 in, by the LULAC in partnership with GI Forum, came together and wanted to create a job bank for Hispanic veterans. So together they went to the U.S. Department of Navy and created what was called back then Project SARE. Since then, we've, this year we're celebrating 49 years. Our great Leonel Castillo was involved in that. Leonel passed away, unfortunately, uh, recently. Uh, he was one of the founders. And uh, uh, you might recall his name. Leonel Castillo was the former cabinet, men cabinet member under President Carter. Secretary of the INS. He was head of INS. That's correct. That's right. Yeah. Uh, homegrown right here in Houston. And he was also the first Hispanic elected citywide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Leonel Castillo was a great guy. But anyway, so Leonel and the gang got together and they made it happen. They didn't. Uh, Leonel, uh, Mr. Castillo served as the first executive director of SARE. Okay. Uh, you know, I did not hats. know that. I did not know that Leonel was the first executive director of SARE. Among his many hats. Wow. Uh, he, he did a lot of things in his lifetime. Now, tell us a little bit about you all now. I mean, uh, obviously, that was a long time ago. So right. what are you all doing now? Well, we've had many different... Uh, we've developed a lot of different programs and we've branched out from serving just veterans. So for, uh, right now we serve people starting at 14 years old all the way to senior citizens who still need to work. Everything we do centers around employment, training, and financial empowerment. The 14 year olds going to work? Uh, 14 year olds needing to figure out what career path they want to follow based on, you know, what, what are the educational steps to get to those career goals. So we start so young. So it's not, it, it, we're, we're not talking about 14-year-olds that have dropped out or anything like that, right? We're, we're just talking a, about 14-year-olds. They need career assistance, I would they, guess. They need career assistance because they're involved with the juvenile justice system. Oh, and I so see. we provide the career exploration piece and the summer jobs so that they start building their work skills. That's good. Mm -hmm. And you pick where they work for the summer? We do. We, we partner with about 50 different nonprofit agencies, and okay. including the city of Houston. We just wrapped up a really large-scale summer jobs program funded through the city of Houston. Well, obviously, TBH needs some uh, worker bees, right? You know, we, we've, we've been part of their program for a long time, yeah. from what I understand. And, and uh, uh, we have a couple of, of, of their, I think, people that are with us in the senior program. Senior program. Uh, uh, senior, I guess it teaches them new, new, uh, uh, um, new capabilities in the workplace, new, new training. And I tell you, we've always gotten some excellent people from that program. And I tell you, just from TBH sample, I want to thank Sarah and Nori Angel because they've, they've always, I mean, without them, and, you know, we've had some lean times at TBH. Without them, we, it would have been it would have been an insurmountable task for us to keep that place open without the help of Sarah. So they've done a tremendous service to the community, to a lot of the nonprofits in the area. And my hat's off to especially the job Nori's doing. She does a fantastic job. Thank you. Now, I will tell you that you guys are my neighbors, mm -hmm. uh, right down the street on Broadway. Yes. Broadway, where it turns, almost turns into Harrisburg. Yep. And what's the address there? It's 201 Broadway Street, and okay. it's right next to Magnolia Park. Okay. So, in that facility, is that where you do everything, or is there other branches? No. You know, we are located in the East End, but we serve not only the East End, we serve five outlying counties. So we provide mobile services to Galveston, Fort Bend, Brazoria, Chambers, and Liberty. Wow. So you know what, Nori? We're in a, we have a really wide service area. How has, how has SIR evolved from its original days? I know, I mean, you're, you guys are doing so much. Now, how, how has the evolution been with Sarah? Well, it's been a pretty natural process. You know, we first of all figured out what we do, which are three things. Uh, the first thing we do is the career assessment and career coaching piece where we help people figure out where they want to get to with their careers. The second piece is getting ready for that job with our job readiness and occupational training. So that's, you know, building the skills. And then the last piece is when someone has the skills, we help them find a job and on staff, we have certified financial coaches that help that person build credit, get out of debt, um, start a savings plan, buy a car, and ultimately buy a house. 
So those are the three elements of what we do. Darn, you know, I, I think I need to be <laughs> in that program. He, he I could use some help. Uh, we're still trying to figure out what Javi's going to be when he grows up. Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah, really, man. I tell you, you're not so, far from the truth. <laughs> so we're going to get him some help. I, I'll actually pay for jobs to get him some help. <laughs> Uh, that, that's amazing. And is that where y'all originally started with that type of program? No, we started just with vets, but now we're serving veterans. We're serving people who are coming out of the criminal justice system, ex-offenders. We're serving seniors. We're serving mm. youth. Um, we're serving dropouts. So we have a lot of different programs that are tailored to different needs. I will yeah. tell you that we hired a couple of Sir Jobs uh, students back I guess it was like two years ago. Right, about three. Three, three years ago. ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, they turned out to be great employees. So the training was good that you provided them. And it had to do with weatherization, mm -hmm. uh, making homes energy efficient. Do you still do that, by the way? No, because the demand has, the market has shifted. Okay. So we've turned our weatherization lab into a welding lab. A welding lab? Yes. So uh, you're right next to all the boats, so they got to have welders on the boats. Exactly. That's good. Mm -hmm. And obviously, the uh, Broadway, it's right next to that port. I mean, where Brady's Landing is, I mean, it's right down the street from there. So, obviously, there's a lot of ships there. No, that, it's interesting because I know HCC is doing a lot of those those job training. Do y'all collaborate with them at all? Or? We collab collaborate very closely. So, oh, HCC cool. partners with us on our welding lab. It's our lab, it's our location, it's our equipment, and HCC sends their instructors to our facility. So. The students get um, to access the certificate program through HCC. Wow, mm -hmm. that's good. Mm -hmm. You know, those partnerships go a long way. Sharing resources as nonprofits, yeah. and you know better than I do. I mean, the resources are not there like they used to be. Uh, yeah. People are fighting for the dollars with corporate Absolutely. America. Corporate America has gotten a little. They're they're kind of holding on to their money a little bit tighter. Uh, you have to really be in their focus to to get that money. Exactly. Yeah, so congratulations to you for doing a great job. I'm Thank just you. curious, uh, how many employees do you have now? We are almost at 50. 50 employees. We, we've doubled in size over the last year or so. That's great. Yes. How many did they have when you first came on board? Well, it, you know, it's, that's a hard question to answer because I came on board 11 years ago and we were doing something completely different. Okay. But six years ago when I took uh, over the position as the executive director, we had four employees. Wow. So from four, four we've 50. grown to almost 50. Can you believe that? I can't believe that. Yes. That's no, great. you're kidding me because you guys have such a big footprint yeah. in, 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 in the just in, in the community. That, is, that amazes me that you guys are at one time four when well, you first got there. And honestly, we're just getting started. I really feel like we're just scratching the surface. There's a lot of need and, and we've been able to be responsive to the need. For example, uh, you know, for about four or five years ago, we realized that about 40% of our clients had a criminal background. And that was shocking to us because it wasn't necessarily something that we were used to focusing on or, or had expertise in which um, when we looked at it, we said, well, where are the jobs for people with criminal backgrounds? And we realized that a good job is, was in welding. And that's how we started our welding program, was to benefit those that were coming out of the prison system and we're going to have a hard time getting a job. And you know what? The welders make some pretty good money. Yes, they do. Yeah, considering that they don't have to get a four-year degree. I mean, that, that's a great avenue. Uh, I look forward to seeing the many blessings that you have as a result of that because there's... That's a hard population to deal with, those convicted felons, yeah. because there, there's not a lot of people that hire them. That's correct. And, and to give them a second chance would mean the world to them. So, Nori, so that's been a successful program. Then. That has been a successful program. Uh, right now, we've served about 350 people coming out of the criminal justice system, and they are getting training, they're getting jobs, they're able to take care of their families. So it's it's very rewarding to see that. And that necessar necessarily hasn't been just a, a male dominated no. program, right? Because no. you have females in there it's learning, women learning as the... well. Yes. Wow. Uh, so you want to be a welder? Uh, maybe, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, Ben. I don't Pat, know. Pat, you hear that, Pat? <laughs> we're going to have a welder in the house. <laughs> well, let's talk about some of the things that you're doing because you have several programs. So uh, you have the job component, mm -hmm. uh, but don't you all have classes for other stuff 
that y'all do within the center? What, what are we they? We do. Um, one key element of our model is the job readiness training. That's okay. a one week intensive, get you ready to get a job. And that's the resume writing, the interviewing skills, the workplace behaviors. You know, one thing that employers often say is we hire people and we can train them the skills, but they may not have that interpersonal skill side. So it's those soft skills that are very critical when you get a job, and that's what helps people to be successful. The interview process once also. Once they get the job, right. Yeah. Getting the job, the interview, and then once you get it, how do you behave when you're on the job? That's something you cannot take for granted. Yeah. So we teach that piece. So um, once, the, once that's completed, people can access our occupational training. We have different trainings in the trades, mm -hmm. like construction skills and welding, which we already mentioned. We've also developed an in-house forklift warehouse technician training. Wow, forklift. And, yep, and the customer service training, which is a certified program. That's cool, because you know, I will, years ago, one of my first jobs was at Old Shan Lumber Company right down the street, and I was a certified uh, tow motor uh, operator. So you used so to I, drive I, the forklift? Yeah, I used to drive the forklift, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> And, and you know, and that that's amazing, Nori, because I know you guys go to the ABCs of how to how to get a job, how to interview. You be I I was amazed how how especially well, of course, you know, you don't expect the the young uh, young people know anything about that. But how many of the older people in the workforce don't realize that you you there's a process, you know, there's a way you certain way you have to conduct yourself and things and you know things of that nature and and. Uh, they actually go through the ABCs of, hey, this is what you got to do. This is what you should do in an interview. You know, uh, uh, they, they go through the whole alphabet, A to Z, and, and, and really train you. And, and uh, that, that, that's fantastic because people can use that training. You know, one job that you might want to consider is heavy equipment operator. Uh, when you're in the construction industry, it's real hard to find those that are actually, that are proficient in heavy equipment. So what happens is you end up, uh, seeing personnel from other companies and you offer them more money for them to come work for you I mean, that's the wrong way to do it, but that's the way that's the way it is mm -hmm. Because there's not enough of them out there. So there's competition whoever pays them pays the most money They're the ones that have the best operators because that that's a little cookie if you yeah. will mm -hmm. to come work for them mm -hmm. so my suggestion would be to do something similar to that and we that's a great idea We've looked into that um, this year. We bought a a forklift so we have we're you know we're moving in that direction and I could be an instructor so we just <laughs> we need to identify which what equipment specifically bulldozer and then the cost for yeah. purchasing one and raising yeah. those we raise the money we buy one and you know caterpillar that's how we work. they should donate caterpillar <laughs> is a big you have maker any relationships of the over there let us know uh, they're in, we'd be I, happy I, to ask yeah I believe they're in Chicago or near Chicago is their headquarters but it'd be interesting if you do something similar to that. You're going to need some land, obviously, to practice bulldozing. Well, we have that. <laughs> yeah, We've got have, the space. And you got to yeah. make sure there's no underground utilities. We don't want any busted pipes. Oh, that might be an issue. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see what happens. So you have any more questions, Mr. Javi? I, I would love to ask Nori, what, where is Sarah going? What, what's next for, for Sarah? Well, we have a big vision right now. Uh, we want to create a flagship workforce center here in the East End that brings together all the elements of what we do, allows us to serve more people, and also allows us to showcase the products that our students manufacture in our classes. So right now we're building Adirondack chairs, you know. Uh, what chairs? Adirondack. Adirondack, that's the wood. The, the um, beach yeah, the wood yes. beach chairs, yeah. So we have a lot great. of wood products. Um, we have the customer service training. We want to st create a, a career cafe here in the Hey, we, we need some new furniture here. <laughs> yeah. We need something just to repair the one that we got. I can just yeah. see us on some beach. beach Adirondack beach. chairs, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you think you can make that happen for well, us? We're working on it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I can see Javi in a rocking chair, too. Yeah. Well, yeah. uh, <laughs> so I'll, I'll stay out of the rocking chair for a while. I do, I do want to share that we have our luncheon next week on October 15th. We'll be having our 49th anniversary luncheon. It's called Empowering Our Workforce. Everyone's welcome. And it'll be at the, at the JW, the newly renovated JW Marriott on Main Street downtown. 
And so that is going to benefit, obviously, Sir Jobs. Yes, but it's is a it, fundraiser for Sir. So is it a general fundraiser for the whole organization? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is to benefit our workforce programs. Okay, great. Nori, yeah. and, and if I guess if somebody wants to get in touch with Sir, see if they have a program that, that they can offer themselves or someone in the family, what should they do? They can either call us at our main line, which is 713-773-6000, or they can go on our website. And that's uh, www.sarahhouston.org. Sarahhouston.org. Yes. And, and what ages do you serve again? From 14 all the way to senior citizens. We do have clients that are in training programs, pay training programs for our seniors that are in their 70s. And some are even older. We wow. have clients in their 80s. Wow. Yeah, I know. People still need to work. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. It is amazing. 80 years old, still working. Mm hmm my hat's off to you, Nora. You guys at SER are doing a fantastic job, and, and they're really going after serving the needs of the community. Uh, 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 the job training is, is just uh, is just invaluable, what, what you're doing. So we need to get the word out on SER. I mean, they're doing great. I can't, I can't imagine them just being, you know, SER does so much. I can't imagine at one time they had four employees when Nori first got there. Yeah. That's amazing. That is amazing to where they, they, they've come to. No, and I would agree. And just 10 Six short years? years? In the last six years. Wow. Mm -hmm. So what I mean, are you waiting for? TBH? Come on. Not really. Yeah, Get with the program. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they may, it may not work out over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you know, Javier is over there at TBH, and uh, hopefully you all can continue to Absolutely. collaborate and make things happen. I know that it's more artsy over here on this side, but uh, I'm sure there's some middle ground somewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, they have. We've had, we've been able to train, uh, uh, well, not not just in you know, of course, the the theater theater services, you know, janitorial, but also we've trained them uh, uh, to run a youth program. Uh, um, uh, Miss Alice Lazard, who's one of your one of your uh, uh, trainees, I mean, she's I mean, this lady came with a wealth of knowledge, you know, and she was so able to adapt. You know, she was able to go out there and really help help in in, in other other parts of of our program that we really didn't expect, but she was you know. I mean, th some of these people come so well. I mean, they're they're very well motivated, and uh, they do a fantastic job. They do a fantastic job. And Nori, thank you again for for letting us be letting TBH be part of the program. Well, thank you. Well, thank you for joining us again, and uh, Thanks, come back anytime you want. We shall. Thank and you. And again, if you guys are interested out there in learning more about your organization, it's Sir Houston. Dot org, right? SERHouston.org. SERHouston.org is the website. And so Ben, you know, we need to we need to recognize that Nori was uh, one of the Mujeres Legendarias from Ford. That's this right. Past year that's right. For uh, NHPO and, uh, and uh, Nori was selected the award. Uh, exactly yeah. for one of the top women in Houston, Latinas uh, that have done some great things in the community, continues to do some great things. So thank you. Hats off to you. Appreciate that. Thank uh, you, Nori. Yeah, well deserved. So when we come back, we're going to talk to Pablo Valle. He's with the Latino Business Connection, and they have some great events coming up. Be part of it. So we'll see you in two minutes. Nori, thank you.
back to Latino Talk TV. I'm your host, Ben Mendez, and my co-host, Mr. Javier Perez, is here today. And before I forget, I want to promote this event that we have. I don't know if you're able to see it, but October 12th, Sunday, yep. uh, Talento Bilingue is having an all-day concert series. First annual uh, TBH Music Fest. Now, some of the entertainers include uh, Sunny Osuna. Javier Perez is going to say. I wish. <laughs> And, and I've never heard of uh, Sandy y los Chamacos. Yeah. Is that correct? Uh, Aviso? Sandy y los Ga Gavilanes. Aviso band. Uh, of, of course, we're going to have all the uh, 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 Ballet Folklóricos from TBH, uh, Grupo um, Ambassadors, it was Miss Nelly Fraga, Alegría Mexicana Xochipilli. A group of Sochipili. So we're going to have some great entertainment there. And there's a few bands in there that people are really going to enjoy. I heard this band in here just a few weeks ago, this Rapture. Rapture? Oh, man, they're a great band. Great band. People are really going to love them. And I couldn't help but notice you have a Jumpin' Jess and Gordy's That's picture. right. We're, we're bringing the Chorizo crew back. From back in the, the Chorizo Kaku crew days. back. Yeah. That's From good. the Kaku Kuga days. Uh, 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 Jumpin' Jesse and, and, and Gordy, the boogeyman, is going to be there. So, uh, it's, so it's, they're MC. It's going to be. They're going to MC. It's going to be a great, great uh, event. Is this his comeback? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know uh, uh, the boogeyman, the boogeyman is doing a uh, internet radio now out of out of Vegas. Can you, you all know? see this? I, I hope you can. Yeah, there you go. It's uh, October the 12th, which is this Sunday coming up. Yeah, you could buy you could buy uh, 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 tickets there or online. Alinto Bilingue, over there off of Jensen and Navigation. So uh, let's talk to Mr. Pablo Valle. Pablo, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so let's talk about your organization. I know you're involved in various groups and so forth, but uh, which one are we going to promote today? Which event is it that, that we want to help you with? It's, uh, the organization is called Small Business Connection, and one of the events that we're going to be having this Thursday, actually October the 9th, is a Small Business Summit. And it's going to be focused on business and technology and bringing, bringing together the small businesses and entrepreneurs. And <clears throat> excuse me, unlike other, other, other um, events that you have out there, what we want to do is we want to bring something different, for, something unique for these small businesses where they come in and learn, have breakout sessions, and truly learn simple strategies that are going to help them grow their business. So they'll come to the event. It's from 8 o'clock to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And they'll go to several sessions, and the main focus is for them to come out and learn something simple that they could apply to their business and take it to the next level. Well, that's good. That's, that's, that's uh, right. Anything helps small business. I mean, it, it's tough out there. Unless you have money in the bank already and you, you're a struggling business, you can get all the help you can, you can get right here with this organization. Anything that you need to help your small business grow. Uh, this is the place to be. I will tell you, I was a small business owner at one time, uh, back 11 years ago. Uh, we kind of outgrew our, ourselves, uh, so we're not considered small anymore. But I will tell you, when I first started, it was first year was very, very tough. Um, if you're not used to running a business, uh, there's a lot to learn. You know, the first year, you, you have a big learning curve. And not only with running the business, but with the IRS and your CPA and the operations, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> now, I wish I had all the resources that are available now back then. It just didn't happen back then. Yeah. So my hat's off to you. Thank you, sir. And, and, you know, interesting what you said, that there's a lot of resources out there. There's different government entities, private organizations. There's even uh, networking groups. One of the things that we want to do, and I always tell people, with Small Business Connection, SBC, one of the things that we want to do is we want to be the focal point of these different organizations, different entities. We don't want to supplement um, supplement all these other organizations, but we want to complement. Now, one of the things that you had mentioned, Ben, is that if you had the information back then, you probably have grown your business a lot quicker than you did. A lot of people would want to have that information. Again, there's several great organizations out there. It's just bringing that information together and bringing it into one focal point. So in essence, the main focus of the organization is really here we are, it's a professional networking organization but for small businesses and entrepreneurs, but the main thing is bringing them together so we could have a focal connection or like a wheel and spokes, bringing all the key organizations and this is your resource for you to get all that information to help you grow. Now, 
A lot of people tend to believe that, well, are you growing businesses? No. One of the things that we focus on is really uh, growing the individual, the business owner. Because once you grow the business owner, the business is going to grow. Because, you know. You think we can help Javi grow his, uh, he's going to be a welder. <laughs> Oh, oh, I, I mean, I mean, he, a little bit. no, Javi could be one of the, one of the teachers. I mean, he, I, I've, I've seen Javi and his leadership. I mean, we could probably use him to help us teach some of these businesses. Oh, uh, well, you guys are being too kind. But, <laughs> you know what, Paul, I would like to ask you, so, so your, your, your organization, I, I know it, it has a lot of Latino uh, uh, businesses in it, but it's open to all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In fact, the original organization that started was the Latino Professional Business Network, LPBNet. Mm -hmm. is what how, what we called it. But one of the things that we wanted to, to do is to enhance the benefits of LPBNet. What we wanted to do is we wanted to create an online publication. Now, of course, as anything else that you're going to create, you're going to have to give it a name. So we catered to small business. So what we did is we called it Small Business Connection. Now, Small Business Connection started as an online publication as a benefit to LPBNet. What happened was that it took a life of its own. Uh, in less than three months of launching SBC online publication, we had over 8,000 plus subscribers. Next thing you know, you had people coming and asking from all uh, walks of life, uh, different cultures, asking us, we want to be a member of your organization, SBC. I said, well, go online and subscribe. They said, no, 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 we really want to be a paid member. I said, no, we don't have a paid membership. So now, being a small business owner, when, you, when there's a demand for you to serve that um, that group or that uh, client clientele, what we did is we created uh, another organization that would cater to the uh, greater uh, small business community, not just the Latino. So hence, we uh, created a small business connection that really took a life of its own. That's amazing. And how, how long have you been around, Pablo? The uh, Latino Professional uh, Network has been around for a little bit over four and a half years. And then um, uh, SBC just started a little over a year and a half. Wow. So it's grown quite a bit. That's good. My hat's off to you. You know, being part of NHPO, National Hispanic Professional Organization, I understand the headaches involved in running a group like that, especially when you're dealing with the masses here in Houston. It's one thing to have a real small group. It's totally different when you have a big group. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of moving parts, if you will. And so it's great to see that you have had success in running the organization. I will tell you also is that there's a lot of overlap with your organization and the other organizations. It'd be good to see that synergy, see if there's a way that we could all work together and make things bigger and better for all of us. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with you. In <clears throat> any organization, there's always going to be an overlap. Now, one of the things is I always, when, whenever I contact some of the leaders of different organizations, I always let them know, come, let's work together. You could still maintain your focus, your focus and vision, because as you know, different organizations have uh, a different vision. Some of them cater to just women. Some cater to Latinos. Uh, they all have their unique uh, uh, vision, but I totally agree with you, Ben. There is a lot of moving parts, and organizations could definitely work together. And one of the things that I would say from a personal experience, and I'm sure Javier and yourself have experienced this, you know, us, and I can only talk about my community, the Latino community, the one thing that the challenge in working together with some of the organizations has been not so much uh, uh, what are we going to do together? But the main thing has always been, who's going to get the credit for this? Who's going to get this? So it's been a little bit of a challenge of uh, trying to bring those organizations together and really say, well, you know, we're working for the greater community. And the community good. here is really the small business community, regardless if you're Latino or you're uh, from a different background. But the main idea is really bringing all these small business communities together. Yeah. And what is, I guess... How how would you describe the 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 environment right now for small business in, in in Houston and in Texas? I would tell you in general, you know what? Uh, depending on who you talk to, I always have a positive perspective. I'm always the, the individual that you know. You have your individuals with is the glass half full? Is, is the glass half empty? I'm always the individual that's going to ask uh, who's pouring the glass. Now, <laughs> having said that, it's a mindset. Right. And aside from being a mindset and being a positive uh, outlook in life. Houston is a dynamic market, is a growing market. Ben had mentioned before with the ch uh, channels, the ship channels, with everything that's happening here. It's a tremendous market for not just uh, you know, entrepreneurs, but small businesses. I mean, overall, you can see the statistics. Uh, it's great. And, and, and also looking at it from a positive perspective, I mean, the market is great.
The market is great overall for small businesses, and we just have to help these small businesses get that information that, so they could grow faster and they could become successful like Mr. Ben Mendez. I will tell you that there's a lot of bond money out there, and everybody thinks bond money is construction dollars. Not necessarily. There's a lot of opportunities. Whenever you have a bond program, like the HISDs of the world, the, the city of Houston, the Harris County, et cetera, et cetera, everybody has bond programs. Now, as long as you have bond programs all over the city, then there's work being generated. Uh, just think about all the business services that are necessary to run the construction companies and everybody else involved in the bonding programs. Yeah. Right. So you all, this is a great opportunity to start a business if you haven't already done so. And for those that are small businesses just getting started, it's about networking. It's about who you know, the relationships that you build, the contacts that you have with the different entities go a long way. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. And it's important also to get to know some of the decision makers. So let's just say I want to do business at the city of Houston. Then it's my job to find out, okay, so who are the ones making the decisions? I need to go meet with those folks, find out what the process, because every, every governmental entity has a different process. And it doesn't have to be governmental. It could be corporate America. It could be anybody that has work out there. You need to find out what they're doing differently than what your normal your normal industry or normal entity does, okay? So if you're, for instance, if you're doing a low bid type job where uh, whoever is the lowest bidder gets, gets the job, that's a no-brainer. But if, if it's a qualification setting where the, the corporate entity is picking the, the best qualified person or job, I mean, I'm sorry, company, then you got to know how to write that proposal. That's correct. That's correct. And then one of the things I'm going to add uh, in a, a reference to that is <clears throat> you also have to understand that for some of the federal government uh, jobs, there is a requirement uh, for small business participation. And then a lot of people do not get involved, especially small businesses, because of the amount of work that's required in terms of filling out the paperwork. But like you said, I mean, there is a lot of information out there. In fact, one of the things that we do is working with some of the government entities is bringing them together and disseminating that information through our website and our uh, seminars, just getting people comfortable with that process. Because there is, you're absolutely right, there is a lot of money out there. Plus, there is a requirement whenever there's a construction project that requires, that uses federal funding. And not to mention, nonprofits can benefit from this as well. Because when there's massive work out there, then of course you need job training, which is why we talked to Sir Jobs earlier. Mm -hmm. You got to have trained employees to come do those jobs, whether it be welders or whatever. Uh, they need to be trained. And, and a lot of these folks are being trained in a total different field than what they came from. You know, I can remember that back in the day when real estate market was uh, really bad mm -hmm. and you had all the realtors looking for jobs. Uh, so it, it's never too late to get out there and retrain, if you will, retool yeah. your tool bag so that you can get that job that you want. Absolutely. Totally agree with you. Yeah. Now, I know you have a full-time job. Yes, sir. You have a real job in yes, addition to this other stuff that you run after hours. This is your, your play, play stuff, but you actually work for Metro. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. And I know you know Metro and the way they operate. It, it's it's a set processes that they have in place to get the work over there. Yeah. You want to oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, not just because I work for Metro. It's a great organization. Yeah. Like any different, like any organization is going to go through its its changes. But yes, uh, I'm in. A, I'm a civil engineer by profession, and I work in the capital uh, engineering and capital projects. Uh, program there. Now, one of the biggest and influential projects that people are, uh, uh, are very familiar with is the rail expansion. But the other thing is, you know, as many of you have heard in the news, Metro is going back to basics. And we're not just a rail expansion company or organization or entity, but we're also uh, looking to uh, rebuild our backbone system, the bus uh, systems, the uh, infrastructure that we have. So, I mean, not just because I work for Metro, uh, it is a great organization. I've been f with the organization now for a little bit over seven, seven months, and I started as a consultant. I was going to be a consultant, on-site consultant for three months. They said, you'll be there for three months, and then, you know, you'll be back to the mothership. 
Seven years later, I'm still at, at Metro. But like I said, you know, there is a different set of process depending on, on the types of work, the jobs that you have. There's not just opportunities for the rail expansion. There's many opportunities. Just like, you know, a lot of people tell me when I tell people I'm an engineer, I, I tell them I work for Metro. They said, okay, so what, what bus do you, ri the, do you drive? I said, no, 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 I'm an engineer. Oh, so you, uh, you're the conductor for the rail. No, that type. <laughs> but the point I'm making is that within the organization, <laughs> right, there you go. So within the organization, <laughs> Do you have, <laughs> yeah, within the organization, you have all these different uh, disciplines, all these different disciplines, and like any uh, organization, and we're, we're over 3,000 plus employees, we do have a lot of uh, the different needs uh, of different, different uh, types of uh, workers that, that we require full-time temp and also material that we order on a monthly basis. So, I mean, it's a huge organization to say the very least. I had the same situation, but for a different entity. I used to work for HPD. Okay doing project management and so the first thing people think that when you say you work for HPD I was a consultant for them uh, they said oh you were a cop <laughs> uh, I'm a project manager <laughs> so I, I understand right right domestic engineer right there you go. <laughs> well actually Ben had been in the system so long he like kind of helped them you know with the the the, the, the criminal involvement <laughs> 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 See how the criminal mind thinks? <laughs> criminal mind. Hey, you have to diversify, right? You have to diversify. So is there any other events that are coming up? Well, one, that, that was one of the major events. One of the things that we do is we always have a monthly, uh, monthly, uh, I'm sorry, a weekly event that goes on throughout the city of Houston and different areas of Houston. And they're mainly uh, networking events, educational uh, networking luncheons, uh, lunch and learn types of uh, events. You could always find the events listed on our website. And then, of course, every quarter or every six months, we, we work with other organizations and, and come up and, and create a bigger event. So pretty much uh, you can go to your website and get all the information. What is your website? The website is www.smallbiz, B-I-Z, connection, C-O-N-N-E-X-I-O-N.com. So it's smallbizconnection.com. And you can find all the information for the organization and uh, the resources. Well, you know, Pablo, being so, I mean, you have such a, I guess, a wealth of knowledge of small business and, and, and the businesses out there that come to you. Do you see a mistake that a lot of these, a lot of these businesses make or, or, or is there, is, is what, what can you, what kind of advice can you give uh, someone that wanting to start a small business now? Well, you know, one, one of the things that, and I, and I think ben, ben alluded to to this, is, you know, one of the things is a lot of people get into their business, get into the business because of a passion they have, you know. They, they love doing X amount, X things, and so they get in there. But a lot of people do not really know how to run a business. So it's not so much about not, not being passionate or doing the, right, the things that you like to do, but it's really running a business. Now, having a passion for what you do and converting it into a business is two different things. So I, I would say, based on the experience that I've gone through, based on the uh, uh, small businesses, a lot of, a lot of the business, small businesses really truly fail because of the lack of knowledge. Now, a lot, and then the other thing is they, they fail to seek that knowledge. They fail to expand the network. A lot of people say, well, I'm not gonna go to this mixer anymore, to this networking event. One of the things you have to realize, in order for your business to continuously grow, you have to go out there, you have to network, you have to, you out there have to build relationships. Yeah. So I would say one, lack of knowledge, uh, doing the, the things that you want to do is great, your passion, but once you convert into a business, there's two different things. Your passion and running a business is two different things. They don't get the knowledge. And the other thing is constantly expanding your network, constantly, because so much, you see, a lot, I always tell people, when you go out there and you network, it's not so much about, about who you know, it's who knows you. And in order to get to that point, you have to create those relationships. And a lot of people, I always tell people, it's a lot better to create your network now when you don't need it rather than wait until you need it, then, you, then it's too late. But I mean, those are the major things. I mean, people truly do not go out there and gain that knowledge. Let's talk about the Spanish speaking owners of businesses. Uh, are they coming to you for assistance? Because there's a, an organization called the Camara de Empresarios, which is the Spanish version of the chamber here in Houston. Mm -hmm. Now, I will tell you that the numbers of businesses that are increasing, the ones that are owned by Spanish-speaking individuals, it's kind of interesting what's happened in the woodlands. You know, you look at the woodlands and the, the amount of people that have gone over there that from Mexico with money. Oh, yeah. Okay? They're, they're buying some serious homes over there, and they're starting businesses here. Yeah, uh, have you come across that? 
Well, uh, one, one organization that you mentioned, uh, La Camara Empresarios, I mean, I, I know that organization extremely well, a great organization, and I'm not just saying that because I was a board member uh, of the organization. Now, one of the uniqueness about the Camara is that they would, like you mentioned, Ben, they cater specifically to the Spanish-speaking uh, uh, entrepreneur or business owner, where we, what we do is we, we cater to the Latino uh, uh, business owner, but it's purely in English. So there's been a barrier, um, barrier there or separation there because because of the um, us uh, transforming all our resources to to uh, Spanish. So uh, we d usually don't don't help as many um, s purely Spanish speaking uh, speaking uh, small businesses, but bilinguals. Yes, we we've been exposed to that now. In terms of the woodlands, it's it's incredible what's happening out there. I'm sure you've come across Mr. Pete Gonzalez, uh, Pete Garcia, US huge uh, U.S. Chamber of, of Mexican. That we've been working in conjunction, doing some events. But now, the other thing you have to understand is that they cater to an extremely different market, a market that it's a lot. They they're a little bit bigger than small businesses. I mean, they, these business owners come with huge investments. So, but we've to a certain degree, to a certain level, we have uh, connected. And of yeah. course, you know, the connection there is ongoing. Yeah, it's amazing the growth over there in the woodlands. I'd be curious to see what percentage of growth is because of the Mexican citizens that moved to the, the United States as a result of the cartels. Now, obviously, there were some issues with the Mexican cartel uh, that prompted all this movement, all the kidnappings and right. all that of all the rich folks in Mexico. They needed to get away. And so they actually, the Mexican nationals have started their own school here in Houston where the, the students are learning Spanish and English and other languages, but these are pretty much strictly Mexican nationals. Right. Yeah, right. incredible. It's amazing. You did yeah. mention, I mean, it would be interesting to really find out, but I mean, based on conversations I've had with some of the leaders in that industry, I mean, the numbers just keep increasing. I mean, you just go and visit the woodlands, uh, Javier, you see the amount of uh, development that's going out there. I mean, it's huge. I mean, mm -hmm. businesses, and a lot of them are natives. Natives, uh, um, Mexican na na nationals are coming in. I mean, they're coming in with big bucks. I oh, mean, yeah. Big money. Big, big money. <laughs> uh, you can't compare. I mean, oh, big absolutely. Money. And, and I will tell you that the richest man in the world, the richest man in the world has a residence here in Houston, okay? Uh, he owns pretty much all the communications oh. in Mexico, and not to mention all the beer uh, from Mexico. I mean, th this guy has some serious money. Now, I will tell you also that there's been a lot of discussion amongst these, uh, what I call uh, Mexican national business owners uh, about uh, President Obama's uh, plans that he has for immigration. Uh, do you have any thoughts on the immigration that's going on right now? Well, you Policies. know, th th there's been a lot of controversy with that. And one, one of the things that I, you know, being in government, uh, that's something that I usually try to keep away way with. You know, there, there, is, there, there is a lot of moving parts, like you said, just with the different organizations, with the, the administ Obama administration, and you know, all these different policies. I, I really tend to keep away from them because they, they tend to be a little bit controversial. Now, what I would think about it would be just purely my opinion. So, in short, I usually keep away from religion and politics are the two things you want to keep away from, <laughs> especially when, you, you, when you're working with a diverse group of people. So let's talk about immigra uh, immigration reform and education. <laughs> since, since, since you brought it up, Pablo. <laughs> and the next election, hey, let's yeah, get there you go. It, man. Right. <laughs> you know, speaking of politics, have you been keeping up with Hong Kong? All the oh, about the, yeah, the demonstration. That's all right. the youth that are pretty much they have frozen, the, frozen the city infrastructure because they they're camped out in the middle of the city, and so when you talk about students. Uh, I'm talking about masses of students blocking the streets in a major intersection there in downtown. Now, I will tell you that that has caused ruckus all over the all over the United States as well, all over the world, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about students here, okay? We always talk about leadership. Well, how do you become a leader and what do leaders have to do? Well, this is a great example of the leadership of the youth in Hong Kong. What they have done and you know just to answer your question how to become a leader especially here in houston they have to go through the uh nhpo leadership program that is oh, a must uh, absolutely and actually you're you need to be in the class too um, i have plans you, i have you plans do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were just talking to sir jobs uh, nori angel that was before you 
uh, she wants to have her staff be part of the Leadership Institute. So that's great. I look forward to seeing the 50 employees there <laughs> at the Leadership Institute. So any last minute announcements? Oh No, pretty much I just want to thank you, Ben, and thank Javier for all the uh, great things that you guys do as leaders, and, and thank you for having us here. I mean, this is truly, having an invitation here is truly a bit major step in showing the community, the Latino community, that we all work together, you know, because there's always a misconception that we each work uh, separately and we each want to grow our own separate organizations. But you know what? Just want to say that, you know, together, uh, I always say that in Spanish, la unión hace la fuerza. You know, together we're, we're, we can multiply, and I really appreciate that because it, it says a lot. One, as you as a leader, as always, as we always seen you as a leader, Javier, as always, uh, you know, thank you for that opportunity because, you know, it shows the community. I always tell people perception is reality, and the perception that we put here is, you know, great leaders coming together and truly bringing, bringing this message forth to our community. You know? Perhaps your group and uh, Talento Bilingue can do an event together. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Uh, down the road. We'd love to. I'm sure there's absolutely. an opportunity We'd love to have, there. have a, a reception there for you guys. I sure. Mean, it's, it's, it's a great, great space for, great, great place to, to do reception. Centrally located, plenty of parking. And we'll make sure we, we'll get there early. Uh, <laughs> make sure you get some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, He's a director. Well, <laughs> yeah, he's there an hour early. <laughs> Pablo, so if, if uh, somebody wants to get a hold of uh, your organization, what what's some good uh, contact information? Uh, the the best uh, the best way is the website, like I mentioned, uh, smallbizconnection.com. They could send us an email, like Ben alluded. Uh, I mean, I have my uh, my full time nine to five job. This we is to cut you off there. We already ran out of time, oh. so we'll be back next week, Monday night, six p.m. live television here at the Houston Media Source in Houston East End. So thank you all for joining us. Perfect. You can let me finish. No. <laughs>